13 Israeli women and children are being released today in addition to 12 Thai nationals. Thailand negotiated the release of their own nationals directly with Iran. Uh, we can now uh, bring in Hussein Ibish, senior resident scholar at the Arab Gulf uh, States Institute in Washington. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. It appears that this truce, uh, which went into effect at 7 a.m. local time, appears to be holding. Do you think yes. there's enough to build on to hopefully extend it? I, I do think it's possible. Um, the only difficulty is that once we are done with the full set of 50 hostages and 150 Palestinian women and children being held by Israel, many of them being held without charge, by the way, so they're arguably some of them hostages as well. Um, once we're done with that, we it, the stakes go up. So even though this is a template for additional exchanges of hostages and prisoners and what have you, it, involving um, extended uh, truces or de facto ceasefires for uh, a limited period of time, and that that could be replicated as you get into the um, other um, hostages held by Hamas, it becomes harder because their value goes more. The real, the reason they're so eager to get rid of the women and children is they're, they're low value hostages. They're, and it's a bad look for them to be holding women and children. Mm -hmm. When you get to things like the uniformed Israeli soldiers, and there are many of them that they're holding, then they're going to want senior Hamas cadres released from Israeli prisons in return. And that's going to be very difficult, especially when Israel's stated war aim is the destruction of Hamas. And it, it would be a complete contradiction to let you know important Hamas people out of Israeli prisons while you're trying to destroy Hamas. Hussein, did Ham you, I, Hamas I just was wondering yeah. if you heard the interview my colleague on the ground in Tel Aviv did with uh, the brother of one of the hostages. Yes. And yes. Uh, he said, you know, just empty the prisons, empty the prisoners, let all the Palestinians out if that's what needs to happen. Given yes. that there's this sentiment out on the streets, there is going to be this pressure ramped up on the prime minister to do whatever yes. it takes to bring the remaining 190, what have you, hostages home <clears throat> once this first batch of 50 is done. What does he yes. do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's Israel has put itself in an impossible situation by saying Hamas must be destroyed. And even if that means Hamas must be destroyed as a, uh, a ruling entity in Gaza, it's not really a, a, an achievable goal unless Israel wants to reoccupy Gaza for a prolonged period of time. That's what Hamas wants, because Hamas wants to launch uh, a long-term insurgency against Israeli troops. Uh, and, and, and that's important for them politically. Now. If So if Israel wants to shift this conflict, which they should, the only thing that makes sense would be to make this a war to free the hostages rather than a war to completely eradicate Hamas. Um, that would be very intelligent thing for Israel to do. But it would mean really walking back a lot of rhetoric. So I don't know if Netanyahu is ever going to be willing to be that sensible. But Hussein, how long... Can Netanyahu last once this war is done? His his future is is on the line uh, yeah. because it seems that people want him out. They wanted him out yes. before this war broke out. They will want him out even more once it's Much done. Much more. Much so more. the fact that he's no longer in the room does that change the dynamics on the ground? It would it would change everything if Netanyahu is out. Then the new prime minister, whoever it is. Um, would have great leeway to restructure this as the war to free the hostages, which would make so much sense. Mm. And it's hard, but the pro and you're right, Netanyahu, uh, I think, is done at the end of this uh, between the uh, the judicial coup that he was trying before and now the the failure on October seven, the radical failure on October, not just seven, eight, and nine of the Israeli security forces to get control of these villages in southern Israel. Yeah, he's done. But here's his perspective right now. 
he thinks the best way to stay out of prison is to stay in power. Exactly. And the best, the best way to stay in power is to, is to continue the war as long as possible, because it's going to be more difficult to get rid of him when the fighting is going on. So I think right now he's committed to kind of extending the conflict. Uh, on the other hand, the public pressure may be too much. I want to ask you, and, and also there's the, the the international pressure as well, because uh, yes, because from the Israelis' perspective, they want to move this fight further to the south at one point, even though they're telling people not to go back up north. It seems yeah. that they want to take the fight down south, which is they more will. populated, and the civil, civilian casualties will inevitably uh, go higher. The number of casualties will go higher. We have over 13,000 people killed yep. in Gaza today. If yep. those numbers go even higher, there were going to be more calls, louder calls for a ceasefire, yes. and that pressure is, is is going to have to weigh on him, and he's it's going to have to be a factor, regardless uh, of what the United States says. Well, undoubtedly, uh, the key is going to be the United States, and the Americans have already indicated that um, the needle is moving. So first, they were demanding uh, daily, um, cease, you know, sort of a, a hourly ceasefires. pauses. Yeah, yeah, our, but they they meant. Originally, they meant three to four days for aid to come in. They got hourly pauses. Then they used the hostage negotiations, which really, this is an American deal. You have to understand, it, was, it really was the United States negotiating Is it American or Qatari? No, it's American through Qatar. Okay. Mm. So the Qataris are like the telephone, right? And it's the Americans getting this deal and convincing Netanyahu, who didn't want to take the deal, Biden insisted on him taking it. And uh, he, had, he then went back and got the Qataris to tell Hamas they couldn't get more than four days. Uh, they wanted five days, six days. They wanted much more supplies. And um, eventually the Americans, through the Qataris, told Hamas, this is the most you're going to get. Take it. And they told Netanyahu, you must take it. You must take it. We must get hostages out. And, uh, you know, he had to acquiesce. So Washington is moving the needle on, on pauses and truces. And at some point, the Americans are going to pull the plug and start demanding it. Now, will the Israelis obey the Americans or, or bow to their pressure? I, I don't know. It's possible for Israel to, to continue, even in, you know, in spite of American pressure and international pressure. But you're absolutely right. We are, you know, the clock is ticking for the Israelis because this is not open ended. They may think they can continue fighting for years and years until they kill every single Hamas member. But that's not the way it's going to be. There is, comes a point where it becomes really damaging to American interests in the in the Arab world. Uh, and we're already at a point where the U.S. is paying a significant price, not with governments, but with with people in some Arab countries. And it's going to get worse and worse. And at a certain point, the U.S. is going to say enough is enough. But what do you make of uh, Netanyahu going on, uh, giving a press conference the other day and basically admitting that uh, he he has Hamas's political leadership in his sights, the same leaders who are neg he's negotiating with right now? Yeah, it's a real conundrum uh, for for Israel. Uh, they they have established a ridiculous war aim, which is that Hamas must be eradicated, and it cannot be done uh, because Hamas is a brand and not a group of people. In addition, they're the Hamas political leaders, uh, the the diplomats really in Qatar. Uh, Khalid Mishal, Ismail Haniyeh, Musa Abu Marzouk, uh, Ghazi Hamad, all in Qatar. And uh, the Qataris have not changed their policy or their rhetoric about Hamas one bit after October uh, 7. They, they apparently they don't really mind. And um, so it's going to be, you know, there's not much Netanyahu can do about those people. And they constitute senior, senior, senior Hamas leaders. Mm. So, look, I, you know, he has to negotiate with these people. It, it, eventually, Israel is going to have to climb down from this Hamas must be eradicated rhetoric because it just can't be done. And it's a it's a dumb war aim because it makes the war an impossible and self-defeating war. Exactly, because war. How, how do you go, how do you, what do you do when Hamas fighters start blending in with the, the uh, civilian population in Gaza? How do you differentiate one from the other? Already happened. You can't. And that's why there's 13,000 uh, people dead already in, in, in Gaza. It's more than a 10 to 1 ratio, and it's a, probably a very similar 
uh, ratio of combatants to civilians on both sides, except that in Gaza, the number of children, the ratio of children is much higher because of the demographics. Uh, Gaza is a much younger population uh, demographically than Israel, more children there. So yeah, you can't. And and then in the end, uh, any, any Palestinian calling themselves Hamas means that Hamas exists. So if Israel is insisting on a war to el eradicate Hamas, it means they're going to be in Gaza for the foreseeable future. And that's what Hamas wants. It really is the, the goal of Hamas to get them back in. This was designed to suck them in. Hamas has said clearly that they want a permanent state of war with Israel. And they have said that if the, the uh, October 7 attack had not resulted in this offensive, they would have done it again and again and again until they got the Israeli response they were looking for. Fascinating discussion, Hussein. Thank you very much for that. That was uh, Hussein Ibish uh, well, speaking to us there.